How's it going everyone? Welcome to my art studio once again. Those of you who haven't uh, been in this awesome art studio, I welcome you. It's a great moment to... Uh, I, I just think it's really cool to be uh, in someone's art studio and being able to, you know, check what they're doing. <laughs> so here we go guys, I'm going to paint a lavender field, okay? This is... Uh, a 16 by 20 canvas, a stretch canvas, 16 by 20, as you guys can see the profile right here. It's a little stretch canvas. Uh, it's really cool. It'll be fun. And let's get to it. So that way we're not, we're not uh, sitting at it. So this is going to be a lavender field. I'm going to draw a little bit just to kind of get the free form, right? Get a little, get a little sense of of what, uh, what I'm going to be doing, okay? Just a little, just a little field of lavender. Nothing too fancy. I guess it's fancy in its simplicity. Something like that, right? Let's make this our focal point, okay? This is going to be our focal point. And we can have different focal points, but I'm gonna make this one it right now, and we'll see. <laughs> hey, that's so awesome, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mari, I really appreciate that. Uh, Mari says, love seeing you paint live. Just want another bid on your eBay uh, for Seascape. That's awesome. <laughs> So here we go guys, I'm going to get one of these uh, brushes, one of these bright brushes I guess it's called, it's it's not a fancy brush, just a regular brush, it's a number 10, okay, it's a bright brush. Uh, sometimes I paint with this ones also, I use this ones, but I like, I like this ones as well, so we'll see right now. So I'm going to use some dioxazine purple, okay, and, and a little bit of blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine, it doesn't matter, it all comes out, and I'm just going to block to be able to create uh, an idea, right, of the lavender. Now, bear with me, I'm going to put another color that is going to create the feeling of that. So, this is just to get it going. You have to you have to keep getting it going, okay? Now I'm not asking you guys like this is the way to paint because this is the way I paint. Okay? This is this is not the way to paint. There is a thousand different ways, maybe a million different ways to paint. I don't know. To each their own. But this is my way, right? This is how I I like to do it. This is how people that that purchase artwork for me recognize what I do. Um my little touch, right? Whatever that is. It's got to be something, right? I've been doing this for 20 years, over 20 years. So there's got to be something to it. <laughs> so this is my, my, let's call this the underpainting, right? For my lavender, my lavender fields. I'm going to get now some um, magenta and mix it a little bit with, with this that is existing there. And this I'm just going to... You know, a little bit light. And this is just to set, right? Set a little tone of what's about to happen. Now, I like to paint quick because it gives me the impression, right? I, I, I take that from the, from the, not so much the impressionist. The impressionist painted very quick, especially when they, when they created artwork that we call sketch, but I don't, I don't think they call it sketches. Uh, but the post-impressionist, Paint it even quicker in the Fauvets, well, we know that, right? Even quicker. There was a different, there was a, a sort of immediacy when they created work. And, and I like that. It's kind of my, it's, it's my cup of tea. So now we're going to go a bit dark. Okay. Not too dark. I don't go too dark right away. And I know this may seem dark in the phone, but I don't go too dark right, right off the gate. Because I want to be able to go darker. If I need to okay same thing with light I don't go too light because if I need to so I start with mediums is what I'm trying to say mid-tones 
Because if I want to go darker, I can always choose. And if I want to go lighter, I can also choose that. That is one of the reasons I don't mind keeping my, my palette a bit, a bit dirty, you know, uh, muddy, as some people say, because, because at this point now I'm playing with tone, tonality, or how are you? I think tonality is for music. <laughs> I'm mixing something else here. <laughs> but for me, again, guys, it's a dance. Painting is a dance. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a dance. I try not to think about it so much. This is one of one of the ways I like to approach. Uh, I used to be a, well, I guess I still am, but I used to be a guitarist, and and uh, and it was one of the ways that I love creating music too and playing music was uh, was to not think about it so much. The moment I started thinking about it, that I was forcing something, and forcing guys is for practice. I'll leave you with that. Forcing is for practice. If you're going to force something, do it while you're practicing. But when you're actually creating, don't try to force anything. At least that's my two cents on this kind of deal. I think the whole struggle of the artist and forcing and that kind of stuff, I, I think that's practice. People get it confused many times. We, we tend to do it. Um, I do that for practice. When I'm actually performing, there is no time to force anymore. Now you got to apply what you know. You know, whatever that is, whatever little it is, whatever much it is, it doesn't matter. Now it's time to apply it. So this is this is my 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 little field. <laughs> that totally could be a jet on a runway. <laughs> right here. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> it really could be. <laughs> I love that. See, in art we all see different things, right? I started out by, by pointing out that this, this right here is our, is our center of, of uh, attention. Uh, it, it, you know, there, there could be multiple centers of attention in a painting. Uh, one, one, although, tends to overpower for the most part everything else. So, we'll see how it goes. It might, it might change. I don't know, right? This is not written in stone. If it was, it wouldn't be fun. It would just be following orders, right? I'm mimicking or I'm copying the same thing that, you know, the plan. And, and, and for me, paintings are not planned. They're, they're just, you know, so a little bit of planning, like, as you guys saw, a little bit of planning, but it's not really, there's not much. And then there we go. Speed has always been my play, my game, when it, when it comes to artwork. I, I love it. I, as a matter, I have a little theory. I think that some of the artists back in the day, and I'm talking about like your Caravaggio's, your, 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 your Greco's, uh, even all the way up to the young singer sergeants, I think they painted with speed. I think they painted with a lot of speed. I know it looks like they didn't, but it's just my little crazy theory. I think they painted with a lot of speed. Manet certainly talked about it. He said only one thing is true. Paint what you see as quick as possible. And, and Manet wasn't very abstract. So I think that they, they, were, they, were, they were playing, you know, they were playing something, you know. I'm, try, I, I, I'm trying to show you guys how I create a lavender field, according to, to me, right? There we go. Keep it fun. There we go. I, I don't understand about the mean. What, what, what do you mean? What's what's my mean? Sorry, I don't understand that that question. If you could, if you could make it a little bit more more uh, more specific. And you know, 
and as we're doing this, we can actually start playing with different tones, different, different hues, right? It doesn't have to be what we started with. But, but that helps us set a sort of a ground, right? At least for me. I'm not a teacher, guys. I'm letting you guys into my studio. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to teach you guys how to paint. This is not what I do. I, I just paint. <laughs> That's not my gig. I just paint. But I thought it would be cool to start showing my process here on, on Instagram live. Check it out. Man, when I was a young when I was a, a, a young a young artist, I'm still young, I'm very young, but when I was like a like a 14 year old artist, I was uh I was always trying to go into art studios, you know, but artists artists I don't know. Maybe the artists I knew were kind of stingy with her. You know, it, it was almost like they acted like they were like they were creating Coca Cola or something. You know, like no one can see me paint. Oh come on, <laughs> we can see each other paint. <laughs> ah, sí, Elisa, son 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 campos de de la banda. De, um, lo que pasa es que lo dije en inglés, lavender. But they are lavender fields, uh, according to moi, right? According to to my je ne sais quoi. Every, every artist has got a je ne sais quoi. This is this is my je ne sais quoi. For me, this is like a my like a someone nailed it earlier. They they, they said that, that I was a, a sort of like a mad scientist, and I, I think I think that's spot on. I love that. I do see this as, as sort of creating, you know, just spontaneously trying to. To create something, you know, I don't know. It's it's uh, it happens, and 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 it's not like oh, let me see if this works. No, it's like it's just like okay, I, I've done this before. I've done this before a few thousand times. Let me play around with it. Let me see what it wants to what it wants to do. You know, and uh, and this is the fun. This is the fun part. According to me, right. <laughs> This is the fun part, according to me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Walker. I love that. I love that. It's just, uh, it's so much fun. There's, there's just something about being spontaneous. People uh, in the U.S. call it loose brush. I think in English, just in general, people call it loose brush. Uh, I've been hearing it, hearing different, different stuff, right? Like people... People call it the loose brush. Some people call it Faubus, right? As we know, like the, the Faubus painters, like Galvan and Matisse. Uh, so my my thing is just kind of like just paint, you know. I don't I don't really I don't really try to to make sense of it, you know. It's just paint, 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 paint. I'm just laying paint down, but I'm playing with with tone at the same time, right? I'm looking for tone. Where is it light? Where is it dark? Where is cool? And where is and where is and where is warm? I'll let you guys know a little secret right there. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it again. Where's light? Where's dark? Where's cool? And where's warm? And, and then I just I just do the the morning approach. Patches of color. That's what he called it. He called it patches of color. So I'm not really for, for, form. Just kind of happens by itself. I'm not trying to force form. I'm just looking for the color. You know. Some people call that approach being a colorist, a colorist artist. You know, whatever you want to call yourself, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. We're all artists, one way or another. But my, my, my thing is just keep moving, keep moving. Keep the, keep the flow happening, you know. There's a flow that is beyond, uh, beyond what I can do or what I think I can do. I, I, I talk ex extensively about this on YouTube. <laughs> I'm a talker, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm like the only artist who's like chatting away while I'm painting. <laughs> uh, my, my wife is getting a break from me <laughs> right now while I'm doing this. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's lavender fields. You know, it's just lavender fields. It's it's. So now I, I remember I, I told you guys earlier that I was going to. I, I wanted to keep it mid-tone, right? I wanted to keep it not, not too light, not too dark. 
Why? This is something that I started seeing with Impressionist painters and some of the Romantics. And this is by observation. Nobody told me this. I didn't go to art school. That's not my jam. Uh, I, just, I just learned how to paint on my own. And, and I, I, I attended museums. Museums were, were, my, were where I, I paid attention. Because you can see a lot of... Uh, you can really see how a painting was started and how it ended. Just by, by looking at a, a painting, at a master painting in a museum. You know, you can see what they started. Like a lot of people talk about Claude Monet and the Impressionist and how they painted on site. Uh, <laughs> I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but a lot of the work doesn't look that way. It looks, it looks dry, it looks wet paint on dry paint already. <laughs> and this is not talked about a lot. <laughs> but if you, if you experience it, if you go see it, you can tell, right, that a lot of it was done in the studio. And, and I know there's, there's sources out there that talk about that, but, but that's the kind of stuff that you learn in museums. You know, you start looking at what they're really doing. Anyways, I'm going to make this lighter, right? And without concentrating too much on it, because if I start concentrating on it, then, then uh, I start thinking about it, and then everything goes to hell. So let's not think about it. This is where, where is the color? Right there, right? And then I can play with it. It's really just a game. It, it's a very serious game for artists, but it's nothing. It's <laughs> nonetheless, it's just a game. It's just a game, that's all it is. This, this whole damn thing is a game. And let's put even more light, right? Just to kind of, kind of really just play with it. <laughs> I'm here. I'm back again. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when you learn to paint on your own, you start looking at things that maybe your art professor never looked at. You know, I think that I mean that's the whole point, right, of modern painting. That's why Monet and the, and the rest of the gang were like, "Screw this. We're gonna do this ourselves. We're gonna go look at." Uh, at nature ourselves. Now, this doesn't mean that we, we, we can't go learn basics, right? And, th and certain things that we need, you know? But, I mean, I had to go and study color theory on my own, and, and, and I did that extensively, and I had to go and, and play with, with uh, anatomy and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make it darker. Remember, guys, I told you that, that I didn't wanna make it too dark so that I can come back with some dark? This is something that I started looking at with uh, the Romantics, like Delacroix, Goya, uh, and Turner. They, they, it's, it's stuff that I saw. I don't know if they did that, but some other canvases certainly prove that, in my observation. They come back with some dark. They didn't start with dark, they came back with dark. They started with, 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 with mid-ground. Mid and the impressions were very bold. Many of the impressions just started with a white canvas like I did. But, you know, just for, just for fun, not, not too serious, you know, just fun. Like, eh, let's go. Some artists don't like that. Some artists want, want to make it serious. Look, if serious is your cup of tea, by all means, go for it. I got tired of serious. Serious made, me, made, made my head hurt. Yeah, there we go. Why not, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 I like this uh, uh, book of, uh, that talks about uh, how to find peace, no? And, and I, I love one of the things that this guy was saying, that some of the, some of the coolest stuff in the world has, has, has been done in a state of, of laughter. And I believe it. I, I, <laughs> I have a blast doing this stuff. <laughs> I have a blast doing it. <laughs> oh, man. So it's, you know, it's just like that. Now, you don't have to keep using the same brush, right? Like, you can change the brush. But I, 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 I got so used to just not thinking about it and going for it. Now, I, I do a lot of work. Right? Like, I love to create artwork all day. Uh, so I kind of just, you know, many times I stick with the same brush. And kind of, you know, because you, you learn the kinks of the brush, right? You learn, you learn the, the, there's a, what do they call it? A learning curve, right? Every brush has a learning curve. Uh, every style has a learning curve. And you just kind of learn it, you know. 
I'm gonna show you guys another one very soon of, of a palette knife painting. And, and uh, you guys might have fun with that too. Those of you who like to paint with palette knife, I love painting with palette knife painting too, with a palette knife. This is a wet and wet, of course. I didn't let anything dry here. I didn't come back to it. Uh, but try it. Try try coming back to it. You'll see a different, a whole different dimension. You know, that's one of the things that I saw in the haystacks, the cathedrals of, of uh, Monet. Uh, a lot of it is not wet on wet. A lot of it is wet on, on a dry surface already. There was another underpainting and another underpainting and blah, blah, blah. On and on and on. And you can see that because the buildup is very dry on top of what was existing there. And, and I love that. I love seeing that. You know, little secrets that this little, this bastard painters knew. <laughs> never shared with us <laughs> unless you observe the painting you know you're a painter and then you start observing the painting the painting you can see that that they were doing they were doing the, all kinds of cool different stuff you know that 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 we don't for the most part right of course if you're into it you're gonna go find it but the most for the most part none of us really uh, uh, see that right And and then at the very end, maybe I'll go a little lighter, you know, just a little lighter, just to kind of, this is what I start calling kissing it, right? You start kissing the, giving it kisses, you know, just uh, you were rough with it for a little bit, right? Well, I was right now, <laughs> just laying color, and then at the end, you, know, you just kind of, this, this I, I love how Soroya does that. You know, I, 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 Joaquin Sorolla, the kisses he does at the end, you can see that kind of very Rembrandt-esque, the way he does it. I love that. I'm not comparing myself to any of these artists, okay, guys, because someone, someone told me, like, you're comparing yourself to all these artists. I'm not. I mean, what, what if I was, right? Maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm one of these artists, and I don't know it yet. <laughs> What I'm saying is that I love little things that they did, little subtle things that I'm like, I'm going to apply that to my artwork, you know? And over the years, I've just been playing with that. <laughs> so that's it. Simple. You know? Keep it simple. Keep it simple and... and I know, I, I know I'm saying keep it simple and I keep painting on it, but really the approach is very simple. It's, 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 it's very direct. It, it, you know, it's, it's fun. Of course it requires a little bit of practice and whatnot, but it's fun. It's a little, it's a little simple, you know. You can even use the back of the brush and start dancing with it. You know, it might, it might need a little bit of that, you know, just to kind of... Give it a little je ne sais quoi. Yeah. I need a little bit of that. Why not? I think it needs I think it needs a, a, a thinner brush. I use like a number two brush right here. And subtle, but there, you know, blue. Blue is a very beautiful shadow of green or purple, you know. But especially, especially, I, I love phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is, it makes a, makes some of the nicest, in my opinion, uh, spontaneous shadows. And there it is, you guys. The name is Jose Trujillo. Man, I'm one hell of an artist. <laughs> like Zorro, Jose Trujillo. Bam. <laughs> I'm not working from a photo, from a reference. Uh, I, 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 have, I have worked from a photo, from a reference uh, for these lavenders because I, I, I haven't been in front of a lavender field. So I have used them. Um, just to get the, 
you know, get the sense of the color, of course, and get the, the sense of perspective. But I've done so many of these that I just, you know, I just kind of play with them and I have an idea of what they look like, pretty much. There's a signature. Take a good close look at it, guys, because uh, we're going places. We are going places. <laughs> so here's my mess, okay? Those of you who are into painting, here we go. This is titanium white, phthalo blue, viridian hue, okay? Or just viridian, whatever you want. Uh, this is pale yellow. This is cat red, purple. Any purple will do. Dioxazine is my favorite. And uh, this is uh, magenta and Mars black. Mars black is used because... Uh, I, I didn't used to use it just because I was like trying to be like, you know, I was trying to fake the funk and trying to be like those, you know, impressionist purists. So like, I'm just not going to use black because, you know, Corbet used black and we're fighting black. You know, we're fighting that that idea of realism, right? <laughs> but, man, black is such a cool color. If you if you know where to put it, I mean, for, for you, right? Not, not, for, not to please the crowd, but for you. If you know where to put it, it's awesome. So there we go, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mari. This is this is definitely going on eBay. I don't know if if this is going on auction or not. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it uh I'm gonna put it to rest. But it's definitely going on eBay. It might go on eBay as auction. It might go uh because I start I start my auctions at ninety nine cents. A lot of my auctions start at ninety nine cents. This might go as auction, or it might go as a as a higher bid auction, or it might just go as a buy it now. I don't know. Well, well, I'll, I'll I'll decide that one later. But look at that! Look at that! And I just got a new phone, so so the brush strokes really. My my other phone, I couldn't I couldn't do this. It didn't have this uh, this clarity in the camera. Let's do a, bam, there it is, Lavender Field. <laughs> guys, thank you so much, I love you, thank you for, for hanging out with me, and I will be showing you guys more of my awesome stuff, alright, take care, and hey, those of you who are artists, keep painting, keep doing, the, keep doing your thing, don't let, don't let the, the negative people bring you down and tell you that you're not good enough, or that you can't, you know, a lot of people have told me that this stuff, this that this stuff that I paint is trash. A lot of people have told me that all throughout my career, they have told me that I don't know what I'm doing. It's so funny because I've 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 been I've been making a living at it for six years now, and people still tell me that it's horrible and that it's ugly. And and I've exhibited in wonderful galleries in New York, in in different places, and 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 I'm just you know it's just a little reminder for you guys. Don't believe the haters because. There's someone out there that loves what you do. And chances are there are many people that love what you do. You just got to show them what you do. This is, this is my message right now, guys. Just show them what you do. Don't wait for someone to be like, oh, it's good enough. You know, no, just start showing your stuff. Doesn't matter where, who, how. There is no right or wrong way. There's just doing it. And I'll leave you with that. The name is Jose Trujillo. I'm a full-time artist. Keep going. I love that, Mari. Keep doing your thing. We have to. We have to. It's the only thing I know how to do. I suck at everything else. I was a horrible musician. <laughs> I'm just a painter. This is the one thing that I can dedicate 16 hours a day and, 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 and sleep like a child. Okay, guys. Take care. Till next time. Bye-bye.